Hey, Mind Freak, the practitioner here. Uh, I think I may actually have a theory as to why your um, thing is working. And ironically, it's not through conventional means. Nonetheless, I'd like to um, suggest a few tightening protocols that you can use here just to make sure um, uh, the ones which were particularly convincing of your actual work were the uh, experiments where you got the fan to work in the opposite direction despite the fact that there, there was a vent blowing against it. That, remember that windmill uh, test you did? And the second one being the straw inside the pot bottle. Uh, now that might have been due to uh, minor amounts of static. So here's what I'd like to do in order to try to, um, how shall we say, um, combine the best of all the testing forms. To remove static, try doing a side wheel like you did in this one, you know, that, pi that piece of tin foil, but setting it up inside a pot bottle and screwing the lid on. Um, you know, put tweezers in or what have you in order to make sure that it balances properly. The reason I suggest doing this is that this will completely, you know, this will be the closest equivalent you can get to a bell jar. The only reason I'm suggesting you don't put a bowl over it or something like that is because I actually came across a magician recently who figured out a way to, um, uh, that, who figured out that very fine breaths of air can sometimes get in through micro cracks under bowls and the like and uh, cause dollar bills to turn uh, when they're on needles or what have you. Uh, this was on uh, Equinox's Secrets of the Psychics. Um, so just to, uh, an idea to remove that, um, a, a pot bottle like you did for the straw experiments, but set up for one of these side wheel experiments would be a perfect way to remove the, uh, the, uh, the heat or what have you. Now try doing that again at a distance, but here's the catch you need to get. Talk to your local physics department, uh, you know, go to your local university, uh, talk to their, your physics department, and see if they have any equipment which measures gravitational fields. Now here's what I'd like you to do, and, and this is what, I, uh, I, what I'd recommend. Um, I have a theory which, is, which I'm starting to formulate on, on how psychic functioning, both for ESP and psychokinesis, macro and micro might be happening, but in order to do it, I need some testable data to actually start uh, better formulating my theory. So here's what I need you to do. Put a gravitometer, you know, put, put a, a, a machine or what have you, which measures gravitational uh, fields, you know, measures the strength of gravitational fields, by your psi wheel. You know, put it there. Uh, and then, of course, you know, and the, uh, the you know, put in the bottle to remove uh, air particles being the, the, the reason to account for the mass. Then start doing your basic, uh, you know, and, and what you do is uh, record on camera what the uh, gravitational field strength is reading of the mass of that bottle, you know, uh, bottle, side wheel, and everything included. Get that under control in your video. Then here's what you do. Go to, um, you know, have, uh, have somebody with a second camera measuring that, um, uh, you know, uh, and you can show it from separate angles, measuring the, um, uh, you know, measuring the changing numbers on the, uh, on the gravitational, um, uh, you know, on the gravitometer. Then what you do is you start off doing your psi wheel work and start moving it from a distance. If the psi wheel still, and, and, uh, and try to keep moving your psi wheel from a distance again, then what you need to do is make sure that that gravity meter and see, and here's the thing. When you're using the telekinetic effects, see if the gravitational, uh, see, if a, uh, see if a stronger gravitational field emerges near the psi wheel or the bottle when you're doing your psi focusing than when you're not. There's a reason I'm suggesting this. I have a, th I have a suspicion that what's actually going on is that um, all mass emits gravity. Uh, you know, um, like, you know, like I think we figured out static and electromagnetic forces don't work. Heat's probably out. And breath is probably out in a lot of those experiments. So the last force that has yet to be considered is gravitational fields. There's also another little quirk about gravity according to the new um, recent work of M-theory. Uh, M-theory clearly states that, uh, um, M-theory uh, higher in mathematics uh, states that gravitons, the, the carrier particles for gravity, uh, should actually be able to shoot between lower and higher order dimensions. Um, the, uh, you know, um, uh, basically, you know, that the, the basically gravity can uh, leave, uh, can enter and leave our universe and go into higher order dimensions, which would effectively circumvent time and space. Now, the thing is that if, um, now, if the, um, uh, if, uh, if telekinesis and, uh, and ESP uh, were working off, um, were working off the, uh, the gravitational force, and gravitational waves like um, like radio and magnets work off the electromagnetic force. Um, you know, it might be theoretically possible that you're still able to move something via distance because of the fact that you are focusing your gravitational field on the object. And um, you know, as long as you're still focusing it through a higher order dimension, space and time become um, space and time uh, become somewhat circumvented. By uh, by shooting your by focusing uh, the gravitational attraction from your body through a higher order dimension. Now the thing is that the way to test for this would be a differing gravitational field um, near your um, uh, near your object, which couldn't otherwise be accounted for. 
So what you do is that, um, uh, and there's a reason. That's the reason as well. I suggest having a uh, a, a second person with a video camera um, uh, viewing the, um, uh, you know, uh, constantly videotaping the numbers. So this way that the extra person there and their breath or what have you would constantly be, ver um, you know, there would always be like a control variable of that from beforehand, like say, f uh, say five to ten seconds before the clip. Uh, or, or half, you know, half a minute before you actually start trying to influence it, then trying to influence it from a distance for, say, the minute, and then another half minute afterwards for another control run. This way, you still get breathing times and a bit of a variation of, um, you know, a control period, and then a uh, a period when you're um, doing uh, the actual influence. And here's the thing: if the side wheel still moves, if the side wheel still moves, like as you're filming it. And if you, uh, if according to the second camera, you do get a, uh, you know, a deviation, you know, like uh, a stronger, gra you know, uh, uh, if the if the numbers start going up, you know, like you start getting a stronger gravitational field, um, ask the local professors how to do a statistical calculation to see if that difference is statistically significant. If it is, and you can repeat it over uh, a series of trials, you know, like a series of these experiments, you may actually have the carrier particle. Now, if the thing still moves at a distance and there's no change in gravity, let me know because I want to make sure that this way, um, you know, because that would actually be the first, um, that would actually be the first thing. Uh, if that, like I said, if there's no change in the gravitational field, um, send me a message uh, to, uh, to let me know and uh, do post your videos online, of course, uh, with this, if you can manage to get a hold of something like that, because um, I'd like to take a look at the possibility of gravity being a carrier, um, you know, uh, of gravity being the carrier uh, for, um, uh, you know, for telekinesis, psych micro psychokinesis, and uh, ESP, and uh, you know, like I said, if it doesn't work in your experiment, then chances are, uh, because it's a physical effect, it shouldn't be influenced by people's beliefs. Um, so chances are, if you don't find it, then chances are my theory shot. So before I even uh, before I even try to uh, uh, formulate the mathematics sufficiently, I can submit it for peer review. So like I said, I'd like uh, I'd like some evidence coming from you before I actually uh, before I actually try to formulate this. Anyway, um, that's my thoughts on the subject. Um, so, like I said, just um, uh, like I said again, uh, grab it a meter. Uh, remember, set the side wheel up again. Tin foil side wheel inside one of those uh, plastic pop bottles, like you did for the straw experiments, with the cap screwed on. Um, you know, to remove uh, air pressure and all that sort of thing. Uh, you know, gingerly set down. Um, again, again, um, uh, grab it a meter by the thing. Half a minute of uh, you know, half a minute before and after the experiments. This way, you get a minute of control time of natural variation of numbers. Um, Film it, you know. Uh, try to influence the wheel both locally and at a distance. Uh, you know, um, you know. Uh, try to uh, try to influence it uh, at a distance um, and uh, and see if the numbers go up. And if it and uh, and if the if the change in gravitational field, if there is one, is statistically significant. So um, yeah. And by all, and by the way, if you get uh, all this data, like what, whatever the results are, in addition to posting videos, could you do me a favor and send me a private message with all the statistical calculations and whether or not it was statistically significant or not? Again, um, like I said, I could really use the data, um, and I'm gonna I would be quoting your uh, your pilot experiment as a correspondence, um, you know, as a uh, as a uh, as an unpublished pilot experiment, just to um, you know, just to give me some uh, basis for how to start uh, working the mathematics for the theory for um, testing under more rigorous, repeated, controlled scientific conditions elsewhere. So, like I said, thanks a bunch for uh, having done the videos. Um, that's the theory I'm giving, is that, uh, uh, that's the theory I'm putting out there, is that it's uh, it's tested by, uh, that it's actually controlled, that telekinesis is being propagated um, by your focusing your gravitational attraction um, in certain directions and thus manipulating the movement of, um, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, you know, thus moving the psi wheel through manipulation of gravitational fields. And, it, and the theory can be tested for by uh, stronger gravitational fields uh, when you try to, uh, you know, that can't otherwise be accounted for when you try to um, uh, uh, influence the psi wheel as opposed to when you're not trying to influence the psi wheel. Hopefully, uh, like I said, put my theory to the test, please, and, I'm, uh, and uh, hopefully I'll get the data back either way. Keep up the good work, mind freak. Toodles.